automating customer support, or automatically scheduling calls with your customers. Those are two things an AI agent can do, but it can do so much more as well. I'm Jacqueline, I lead developer relations here at Voiceflow, and I'm gonna show you everything that you need to know to build your first AI agent, even if you're a complete beginner. So to get started, head over to voiceflow.com, make an account, and head over to a dashboard. That'll take you to this page. Now from your dashboard, you can actually generate an AI agent using AI, but we're not gonna do that today because I'm gonna build one from scratch so you understand what's going on behind the scenes. So let's click projects and new project. Now we're gonna build an AI agent for a real estate company called Beaver Realty. It's a realtor and it helps people find homes in Toronto. So let's call the project realtor agent and I'll hit start from scratch. And in just a second, we have an AI agent. To be more specific, we have our agent's workflow. This is a workflow, it starts where it says start, and our agent to work out what to do follows the workflow's steps. Oh, and this is a step. To be specific, this is an agent step. As you're building AI agents, you can use agent steps together to do a bunch of different things. We'll get into that later in this video, but you should know that as you're building agents, well, there are other steps other than the agent step, but unless you're building something really advanced, you probably don't need to use them. So let's take a look inside our agent step. I'll click edit agent, and this is what it looks like. This is an entire AI agent. There's a couple things going on here, so let me explain them to you. First step are the instructions, or the prompt. If you've ever used ChatGPT, you already know how to write a prompt. For example, if you say, here's some data, can you summarize it for me? And you paste in that data, well, that's your prompt. This instructions here, they're also a prompt. They tell our agent what to do. Next up, we have tools. Tools are things that our agent can use, like tools. For example, a tool can be used to send an email or look up information or create a ticket in Zendesk. Or if you're a developer, you can use it to send API calls. Now, there's a lot of different tools, but we're gonna focus on a single tool in this video, the knowledge base. The knowledge base basically is like our agent's brain. It's a place we can look up information and use that information to answer questions. And finally, there are exit conditions. As you are building your agent, you don't wanna put everything into a single agent step. The best AI agents are where you have multiple agent steps joined together. In fact, I think of AI agents like six-year-olds. If you tell a six-year-old to go get ice cream, then the six-year-old will probably go get ice cream. But if you tell a six-year-old, go get ice cream, and on the way, go to the shop and get some carrots, and also go via your friend's house and pick up your coat because you left it. Well, first of all, you're a terrible parent. And second of all, the six-year-old probably isn't gonna do all of that. That's a lot of stuff for a six-year-old to remember. AI agents are the exact same thing. If you tell them to do too many different things, they're gonna get confused and not work as well as if they have a single task they can understand. And our first agent step task is going to be answering questions that the user asks about Toronto real estate. So let's build that. So first up, let's get rid of what's currently in these instructions. We can manually write some instructions, but hey, we're an AI company. Let's go and generate our instructions using AI. And let's say generate an agent that answers questions about Toronto real estate using information from the knowledge base. And we can say the agent is for Beaver Realty, which is a name for a fictional realtor. Now, of course, you can build one for your company. This is just an example. So I'll accept this. This is our prompt. It's been generated. And this is only a starting point. Don't think of this as the be all and end all of your agent's instructions. Over time, you'll wanna come back here and you'll wanna refine it. But it's a good enough start for now. Okay, well, we have our prompt. We don't need any exit conditions, but we do need a tool, the knowledge base. We need to look up information, remember? Now, currently, our knowledge base here is turned on, which is great. However, there's currently nothing in our knowledge base. So let's go and add some data to our knowledge base. To do that, what we wanna do is come back to this workflow, and if we look on the sidebar, there's a bunch of different options here. These are all of our agent settings and conversations and a bunch of other stuff, but we just need the knowledge base for now. So let's look on the brain. Now, we can add a bunch of different information to a knowledge base. We can add web pages. We can upload files. We can just add plain text. 
But in our case, we're gonna use the sitemap option. This lets us automatically add a bunch of pages from our website. Now you can see here that Beaver Realty has a website and on this website, it has some properties as well as a bunch of information about the company. We can get the website sitemap by adding sitemap.xml to the end of the URL. If you're not a developer, or you don't know what this means, don't worry, our agent understands it. So we can copy this, head back here and paste it in. This means all of our website's pages will be added to our agent's knowledge base. Now our website changes about every week. So we'll set this to weekly. And these are a bunch of different options which we can use to refine the data that is added to our agent. Now you'll wanna play around with these because some will work better for different websites. But I think these first three options, smart chunking, FAQ optimization, and remove HTML and noise are the best fit for our website. But you should again, should play around as you're adding your own website. Awesome. Now let's hit continue and import. And here we go. So we are currently importing all of those web pages into our agent's knowledge base, which means our agent can reference them as it is answering a user's question. Now you can see here, if a page doesn't exist, like this contact.html page, it's fine. Don't worry, our agent is smart and it can handle errors like this really, really well. But you can see here, we've got little check marks turning green. Let's take a look inside this neighborhoods.html file. And you can see here, wow, those are some great neighborhoods in Toronto as well as some information about first time home buyers. And this is automatically chunked and split up. Amazing. Okay, now that information is in our agent's knowledge base, let's go back to the workflow. Well, that's it. No, like really, that's it. We have just built a functional AI agent. So now let's run it. We can hit run. And we can see here, welcome to Beaver Realty, your trusted partner in Toronto real estate. And there's a bunch of things our agent is offering to do, but let's just say, hey, I have a family. Where are some good places for me to live? Now we had that neighborhoods.html file, that neighborhoods page on our website. So let's see what it does. Here's some really great neighborhoods, but hey, High Park Swansea and Leaside. Those were in our web page that was imported into our knowledge base. So our agent is smart and it's gone and recommended it. In fact, we can see here, if we look in these debug options, that it's searched for knowledge base to answer this question. Now, these are some long answers. So let's imagine we don't want such incredibly long answers. How do we change that? Or how do we change anything about how our agent answers a user? Well, we can do that by modifying the instructions. So let's give that a go. We'll close out of here. We'll click here and we'll click edit agent. And let's edit the personality. Let's say the agent is always succinct and answers questions as briefly as possible. See, that was just plain English. And now let's see what changed. So I'll hit run and I'll say, hey, recommend me neighborhoods for a family. Is it gonna be different? Well, it's still looking up data from the knowledge base. High Park Swansea, but there you go. No giant bullet points, just a recommendation. Perfect. So again, whatever works best for your business, you can refine your instructions on each agent step to go and get those perfect responses. So we have successfully managed to go and build an agent. This works amazingly. But you know how I mentioned that agents, well, they're like six year olds. You probably don't just want an AI agent that can answer questions. Well, if you do, you can totally do that. Imagine we want our agent field to do other things, such as letting user hire the realtor or scheduling time to see a property. Well, we don't wanna go and cram all of that into this single agent step. So instead, we should add another agent step. Let's first of all add an agent step to route the user. Well, how do I add another agent step? Well, I just drag on the agent step to my page and then I create a new agent. Now we'll treat this agent as like a routing agent. So let's go and generate this prompt. And let's say, generate an agent for Beaver Realty that routes the user based on what they asked to do. And I'll hit generate. There we go. Automatically generating a bunch of instructions. I'll accept those for now. Now, this is not gonna be able to answer questions. We've already got an agent to do that. So let's turn off its knowledge base access. 
But finally, we need some exit conditions. We want to exit to the correct AI agent for what the user is trying to do. So first up, we'll add this to our prompt. We'll say the agent can route the user to the following options. Answering questions, hiring the realtor, or scheduling a viewing. Then we can add some exit conditions here. Going to press add. And we've got to give our exit condition a name. So we'll say answering questions. And we'll say exit when the user has a question about Toronto real estate, Beaver Realty, or anything else that is housing related. Perfect. And then let's go and add a couple more exit conditions. Let's say we can add an exit condition for hiring the realtor. So hiring the realtor. We'll say uh, exit when the user wants to hire Beaver Realty or when they are interested in purchasing a property. And finally, let's add a final exit condition. That's gonna be for scheduling a viewing. And we'll say exit when the user asks to schedule a viewing or they have a property that they're interested in. Perfect. Okay, so now we can connect our agent step to another agent step using these exit conditions. To do that, I'm gonna close that here. You'll see, oh, that's big and in the way, but we can, we can move it up here. And let's move, this is our original agent step we built. We'll move that just here. We'll move the start block just here. I'll start step even, sorry. And then we'll connect the start step to here. So it's gonna start and it's gonna go to our router, the Viva guide. You can answer questions, hire a realtor, or schedule a viewing. This little agent here lets us answer questions. So we'll connect this agent to this agent. And now let's try it. I'll hit run. And I'll say, hey, what color is the sky? That is nothing to do with Toronto real estate. Hey, well, I'd love to chat about the sky. It's blue, by the way. I'm here to help you with Toronto real estate questions. You see here, we didn't ask to do one of these three things. So our agent didn't route us. But let's say, hey, actually, I'm interested in Toronto's neighborhoods. We saw that work earlier. What happens if I do this this time? We're currently on the first agent step, and now we're on this agent step. We've been routed, and now it says, hey, has many fantastic neighborhoods. Here are some examples. And now we can keep having a conversation. And let's say, uh, what about if I'm a single person who wants a condo? Well, it's gonna stay inside this agent step. We're gonna keep having a conversation in here because, well, there's no exit paths to get us out of this step. This agent step will keep running forever. The conversation won't stop. It's not just one and done. It's just like ChatGPT. You can keep asking follow-up questions and more. Now, if you're curious about what is going on inside your agent, take a look at these logs down here. Every time the knowledge base is searched or an answer is generated, you can see what's going on. You can even click and get a bit more information if you're technical. Okay, so we have successfully built an AI agent. I actually think it's pretty much ready to go. Of course, we should probably build out the hiring the realtor and scheduling a viewing steps as well. However, we have another video for that where I'm gonna show you how you can use voice flows integrations to connect to third party services. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. Now, let's go and publish our agent to the world. We can't just use it, we want everyone to use it. So we'll hit publish and publish. This creates a public version of our agent that our customers can use. And once it's published, there's a couple different options how we can actually use it. First of all, we can embed it onto our website or we can connect it to a phone number so our users can call the agent. Or if you're a developer and technical, you can use our API to integrate directly into a bunch of different things. For now, let's take a look at our agent and add it to our website. So first up, we're gonna go over here where there's a puzzle piece that says interfaces. We'll give it a click and we'll make sure we're on widget. Well, here we go. We can go and modify how our agent appears. We can change the colors and the style. Here we go, you know, let's say it's green. If you really like vomit green for your agent, please don't do that. There's a bunch of better colors, but you can add your logo and everything else. 
once everything is set and you're happy, well, here is the code to add it to your website. So you just need to copy it and paste it onto your website. If you're not sure how to do that on your platform, well, just head over to ChatGPT. ChatGPT is great for this. And just say, how can I add custom JavaScript to, and then the platform you're using, such as how can I add custom JavaScript to my Webflow website? Let me show you what your agent looks like in the wild if we embed it into a website. So imagine this is WordPress or Wix or whatever you use to host your website. You'll follow those instructions from ChatGPT. You'll paste in the code wherever it said to paste it, and then you'll hit run. And then in the corner of your website, you'll see your agent. Of course, you'll have changed this text from test your agent when you were customizing those options earlier, and you'll hit publish. And then here's your agent. We can have a conversation with our agent in the wild on your very own website. And of course, as I mentioned before, you can customize this to fit your brand, not ours. I also mentioned you can connect a phone number. That's also just as easy. Just click the telephony icon on this interfaces page and then just follow the tutorial that pops up. It's easy, trust me. It takes a couple of minutes and that's it. You can then call a phone number and your agent will answer and you can have a conversation with your agent over the phone. Amazing. And that's it. That is how you can release an AI agent into the world. You have the knowledge to start building AI agents. And the best way to learn how to build AI agents is to build AI agents. So have a go, play around, build amazing capabilities. And if you get stuck, head into our Discord server. There's a great community there who can help you out. The link is down below.